And I was blessed to have an opportunity to meet a guy, met a guy, and he wanted me to be his national sales director selling video advertising. So I decided to leave healthcare and started consulting. I put the work in, and since that time, I've opened two digital marketing companies. If you're working for somebody else, you're not following your dream, yeah. you're following somebody else's dream. We're all gonna fall down. We're all gonna make mistakes. It's how quick you get back up again, because you only hear about the one success they've had. Yeah. But they may have had 15 failures before they actually, like Abraham Lincoln, yeah. ran for, I think, president seven times before he got elected. I don't care if it's even a hobby. A hobby could turn into a business or a side business. All right, what is going on, guys? Welcome to Be Frank, uh, Be Frank Podcast, episode 32. Uh, today we have a guest. He is a digital marketer, entrepreneur. He's a guy, knows a guy, knows a guy, or well, whatever. Uh, so, uh, Clayton Polly, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Yosuke. Hey, the, it, if you, you know, everybody knows a guy that knows a guy. Well, I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, like, you knew the guy, and then, like, uh, we, we met... I think almost 10 years ago because yeah. I started my business as Gen M in 2013, 14-ish. Mm -hmm. So that was before then. I was with a different business partner back, back then. And then you, uh, we, what do we do? Like we, we shot, we, you asked us to make a video. Right. Oh, that was alpaca stuff. Well, yeah, it was kind of funny because I went to the uh, Oklahoma the Lula Kabooza or something like the, the OKC. Shimuza Palooza. Shimuza Palooza, right? Yeah. And I met your former boss there. Yeah. And I was out handing out business cards, telling them what I did. And I was basically, at that time, doing pre-roll video advertising for clients. And yeah. I, I met your boss there. And um, we had I had a shoot I had to do for one of my clients. And it really wasn't people. It was alpacas. And these <laughs> great people in Yukon, they had an alpaca company. And I think I met you and at that time JC there. And uh, then, I, then I started working on the side with JC on some deals. And obviously he dragged me to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know the guy knows the guy. Knows the guy. <laughs> and then like, uh, so you were doing like um, healthcare first, right? Mm -hmm. And then you went to digital marketing. Like, can you kind of, like, I like to ask questions that like, you know, kind of introduce yourself, mm -hmm. but like, if you have a website like you're building mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. and then you're writing a, your bio, what, was that, what would that be? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. My career, it, it, I was trained formally in hospital personnel work. And when I graduated from college, I was a hospital personnel director at, you know, I think at 25 years old, relatively young. And from there, I got, I got involved into more outpatient type clinics and, but somewhere in between that gap of going into the clinic world, I actually, I was in politics. I, I was a county commissioner for four years on the coast of Maine. Um, you know, one, one little novelty I tell people about, because I'm not from Oklahoma originally, and people don't understand me half the time. <laughs> my wife has to yell, we go through a drive through my wife has to yell through the window, yeah. and tell them what I want, because they don't understand me. But I grew up on the coast of Maine, lobster capital of the world, and I was really blessed to be the Chamber of Commerce director of that area for about um, seven years. Mm. And we went from basically uh, 300 members a year total up to about 600 by the time I had left. But, but during that time, I was Chamber of Commerce Director. I had left healthcare. Then I basically got asked by a friend that had some outpatient clinics, would you come manage them for me? And I said, sure, why not? And from there, I got back in the healthcare full time. Uh, my last gig was really a CEO of neuro rehab centers. I opened stroke, brain injury. So if someone had a car accident, someone had a uh, uh, stroke, you know, we helped them on a, not only th their acute needs, but also on a day treatment basis. And after about 13 years of doing that and going from one clinic to opening seven clinics, I, I just get tired of it. You know, corporate health care was changing. You know, the affordable health care came involved. It's not managed care about the patients, more about managing the costs for the institutions. So I decided to leave health care and started consulting. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Because it's interesting to me, like you're saying, like a, do the United States health care used to be care about patient more? Oh, I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, it, it wasn't like this all the time? No, I mean... You know, I grew up in the, you know, got out of high school in the 70s, went to college in the 70s. Yeah. And nursing care, for example, was one-on-one -on -one nurses. You know, yeah. I actually, 
I've been married twice in my life, you know, and both of them were to nurses. <laughs> so I have a good, you know, plus I worked in the healthcare business. But what I, what I learned was that the, the patient care was better back then. Mm-hmm. It was more one-on-one. It wasn't about scanning a, a barcode before you come into the room. Right. As opposed to, so what happened was that the companies realized that that um, they, they used to be reimbursed for all the costs. There used to be something, a cost reporting that was through Medicare, CMS. So most hospitals and clinics were reimbursed by cost reimbursement. So whatever you expended for cost, you got reimbursed. Well, that got changed and they came up with managed care. Managed care is basically trying to manage everybody's care. But what they did during that time is they came up with studies and reports that what's the typical length of stay that someone would stay in a facility, how long they need rehab. So when that came out, people wanted they were reimbursed on how quick, basically how quickly they cured someone or how quickly they got somebody out of the hospital. So they had to, they has, had to start measuring outcomes. So if the patient is gone, like uh, leave the hospital quicker, they make more money? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. Exactly. I mean. How, wh- why is that? Just because the, the, the regulations set by CMS. So basically, my wife's the case manager of several case managers, and, 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 and basically, they want to get you in, but they, they want to make sure that they do a good job up front. But if you come back in the 30 days after you're discharged from the hospital, the hospital gets dinged financially. So what they're doing now is setting up more telemedicine programs, making sure that when you're discharged or anybody's discharged, that you're taken care of, you're doing the right things so you're not, get, you're not readmitted. But I always felt they called it managed care. It's really managing the hospital cost. So is that like an insurance company rewarding or like a government is rewarding? Well, CMS is, is, is a, um, basically a governmental program. It runs the state's Medicaid programs yeah. and also runs the, the Medicare programs. Gotcha. So most insurance companies follow suit with the, the feds, basically. So, so a lot of your private carriers, Blue Cross Blue Shields, United Healthcare's of the world, they kind of follow whatever the reimbursements is from the federal government. So, huh. but really, in today's world, I think everybody needs to realize we have to take care of ourselves. And, and you probably realize that after COVID. Yeah. I mean, but uh, yeah, it's really about managing costs for the hospitals, for the clinics, for them to survive. And, and, and even though they care about the patient, don't get me wrong, great therapists, but the business side of Everything is a business. I mean, you know, if the hospitals don't make any kind of profit, yeah, or if you're a private, non-profit hospital, if you have no margin, you have no mission. You yeah, have the resource to do it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the easy, can you uh, turn off the AC too? I guess it's just going uh, off. It's getting hot in this camera now. <laughs> and then, uh, but anyways, you can you can turn it up so that you know, just close it but anyways uh yeah because my girlfriend was in the hospital for a long time and then i've heard like like a you know like a what's that called like a home care nurse mm-hmm. like they come and then they, they say like well i used to be able to come here like every day mm-hmm. but now it's like i only can come here once a week mm-hmm. and they also like hospital when she got discharged she wasn't kind of ready mm-hmm. like she could have stayed longer she was still like in the like uh, antibiotics mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff and then she w- didn't feel comfortable going home but they're like well you can go home or go home you know mm-hmm. so that kind of makes sense kind of opened my a- eye to me that you know insurance company or those kind of medical care mm-hmm. that you know they're saying like oh we need a hospital bed but i see those empty rooms right so like i thought that was like kind of like huh what is what is going on and i thought that this was a uh, the way it has always been you know yeah. in the united states but i guess it's it was no, it really, used to be unlimited stays I and mean, if you had an injury you broke it broke an ankle or you got in a car accident it used to be unlimited your insurance company they were called the old indemnity plans and basically you paid typically 20 percent stay as long as you want mm. and that your insurance company based on the premiums you paid paid the 80 percent so in sometimes some plans you actually could get a portion of that 20 percent back but when the whole thing changed and they started managing you know some of them had to be managed better anyways but mm. but I, I think the whole the 
patient relationship, even with the doctors. I mean, doctors, when I was a kid, I didn't go to the hospital. The doctor used to come to our house. Yeah. The doctor would come to our house and, hey, my, you know, my mom would call and say, my, my son's got a cough. He won't go away. Well, five o'clock at night, he would knock on the door and the doctor would have a bag and walk yeah. into your house. And <laughs> so th- times have changed. And, and I think even doctors today that used to work independent now work for the big corporations. They're a hospital corporation. Gotcha. Very few physicians actually work on, work on their own now. So. Gotcha. So then when you're working as a the CEO, like for, you say 13 years or 17 years? About 13 years. CEO. 13 years. And then you say you went to digital market. Mm-hmm. So like uh, what what made you like uh, just like uh, jump into digital marketing mm-hmm. or like a uh, career change, I guess? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, drastic career change, but but not so much. I mean, you know, when I, my background from running the Chamber of Commerce, I was always involved heavily in the marketing. So I always knew my message, I, even though I had people going out talking and, and presenting my programs, I always knew what my, my mission was had to be done. So I was, I always was a spokesperson for my organization. I did the marketing plan. I basically told them where to go, what to say. But when I left healthcare, I started consulting and I yeah. started working with outpatient clinics some couple here in Oklahoma City, a couple in Maine. And basically the whole idea was operational. To, so how, how efficient are you running your organization? Mm-hmm. Are you billing for the, at the right rate? Do you have the right billing system? Do you have the right staff? So, But during that time, Yosuke, it was uh, back 2010, that's when social media just started happening. I mean, at that time, Google didn't even own YouTube. And Facebook just came out. And my, my daughter would, used to be on Facebook. And with this guy named no, she got on uh, MySpace first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was she was friends of this thirty year old guy, and I'm like, who's that? You know. <laughs> so you know, I was kind of down on social media, but yeah. as I started looking at it and realized that I could move my clients to social media, I, I really started embracing it. Yeah. And and I was blessed to have an opportunity. I met a guy. I met a guy, and he wanted me to be his national sales director, selling video advertising. Mm. Well, at that time, I was working with YouTube, and, and uh, on, at that time, YouTube was in, owned by Google, and then I was working with a couple of other companies, Yahoo, Verizon, and we were placing video ads um, for different comp- businesses that, and I ha- actually had to build a, built a sales team around me. I was a sales manager, and we were really killing it until what happened, then Google bought YouTube, then more people started getting into what we were doing, so... Yeah. But yeah, it really was. I mean, I, I, when I first got involved in digital, I met some guys that actually had hijacked, so you could put an ad on top of a pod. No, not the, the, well, we didn't, weren't even doing podcasts then. Did you but, did you quit your job before you started a new career? I guess. Yeah, I I I, I kept my uh, I, I I basically took my money from healthcare, and took about six months off. <laughs> Went to California, I hung out for a while. <laughs> uh, it was good. It was cool. Yeah. And my wife was was a nurse, and she you know, left her job too. Yeah. So we're about six months. We just kind of my my daughter, my wife's daughter, get married in California. So we were out there for like six months, you know. And, uh, and then then reality struck. Like we we've gone through our savings, you know. Yeah. But um, during that time, I was really building my digital marketing company, and from transitioning from healthcare to digital marketing. I learned this all myself, and I try to tell people I work with when I invest in people. I'm not talking about money I invest in people, but if you're going to do something like I did, you got to put the work in. I mean, what I know digitally, no one taught me other than me watching a webinar or going to a, to a training session myself, but, but you got to put the work in. I put the work in, and since that time, I've opened two digital marketing companies. Um, one's called Pathlight. Uh, digital marketing and and uh, then I have another company called Local Toma, which is top of mind awareness. You know, local top of mind awareness. And so, yeah, and I have clients around the country. I work with anyways from a lot of churches. To, you know, I've actually done some I think some casino work that you've done some video work for me as well. So. Yeah. So, like, uh, do you think like uh, a lot of people change careers? Right. Like, used to be like I guess. American dream or like whatever, right? Like when you you go to college, you work for a company mm-hmm. like forever or whatever. Right. But now it's like a more and more like I think it's a statistic is like three years or five mm-hmm. years or something mm-hmm. like that to stay in a company. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But what do you think about changing a career? Is that is that do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing. I mean, if you're tired of what you're doing, if you're not happy, think about it. A lot of people 
you know, think about the metro. Some people that live in Edmond mm-hmm. got to drive 20 minutes or 30 minutes to get into the city. Mm-hmm. Same th- some people live out on, live in Shawnee. Yeah. They have to drive in the city, you know, 45 minute drive in, 45 minute. So you're figuring about an hour, hour and a half on the road. Yeah. And then, then you go there and you, you're following somebody else's dream. Yeah, you, 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 someone started that company. Yeah, and you're you, you're you're just part of their plan. Yeah, and I always tell people if you if you're working for somebody else, you're not following your dream. Yeah, you're following somebody else's dream. So you know, I, I think people aren't happy at work. You look at the studies; a lot of people aren't happy in the workplace. I think they're working with less staff because of COVID issues. Yeah, I think they're working with less resources. So I, I empower people. To follow what you want to do, and I think that's what you and I do really good, is we invest in people. I'm not talking financially, but our knowledge, with the knowledge that I have and the knowledge you and I gain from each other, that's what we're doing to invest in people and encourage small entrepreneurs. And and many times the big guys even realize that we've been doing the same thing day after day after day. Yeah, your audience is changing now. Day. So. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of like what I've been thinking about. It's like entrepreneurial. Uh, spirit and they're also like small business right mm-hmm. like a people i mean 18 year old like a start a business i mean like i'm saying it like kind of like i'm old and then like also like <laughs> i did start kind of my kind of business like 18 20 right, some right. somewhere around there but like we kind of glorify those people to start a business and then they are starting business some i mean I think like 70% or 90% of business fail or whatever. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, my thing is like those business needs employees, <laughs> right? So like where, like, so like, and then like also like a people like, like that kind of talk is almost like we're encouraging people to open the business, right? Mm-hmm. So like, where is the fine line or like, do you think that, people who are working for somebody else is not good you know what i mean like it just kind of like society is so much pushing people to be an entrepreneur or whatever mm-hmm. like a gary v for example mm-hmm. like oh if you're 40 50 you're not too late start mm-hmm. your stuff and you know do tiktok you know post five times mm-hmm. a day and then just like it's just so much of like encouragement right i think it's a good thing but i think isn't that too much right now, you know? I think it depends on the person. I, I think that a lot of people have always had a dream. Yeah. You know, because something that I, I really believe, I'm one of those guys that believe that God has given us talents. Yeah. And sometimes those talents get blocked because we got to pay the bills or we've got kids at home or we've just a lot of the, the things that society tells us we need to do. Go to college. Get a degree then get a good job. Yeah. That doesn't guarantee success or happiness. Because if you don't feel happy and you don't feel successful, maybe you're not doing the right thing. Yeah. And I think the, the, the hardest thing is with people where I, I try to tell people, follow your dreams, not full time. You know, like I like Gary Vee said this, you know, if you're going to work a job eight to ten hours a day somewhere else, don't go home, grab a beer, and start watching lost that is true get yeah. your nose out of loss yeah. and start working on your project yeah but the problem is i think a lot of people have a dream but they don't realize it's a business yeah but how many times you had someone say man you cook good cookies or maybe you uh, maybe you've got some great um, whatever it is right you're a good cook yeah but you don't know deadly about business yeah True. You know, I find that in, in, in the ministry world, or working with, with churches and pastors sometimes, that they have a heart to serve people. They have a heart to serve God. Yeah. But the problem is it's an organization. The minute, like here, the minute you say, I'm going to do this, you and JC, well, we can't answer the phone. We can't do the billing on our own. So you got to find someone to do it. Yeah. So I think a lot of people don't realize if you follow your dream, you got to come to people like you, come to people like me that will pour into you because – you know, you've helped me in a lot of things dealing with your generation. I think I've shared things with you, the old gray haired guy here, that, <laughs> about my generation. But I think it's really knowing that when you venture out, there's support for you. But there's also, you get to realize that it's a business. Yeah. It really is a business, you know. Yeah, what do you think about, like, how does, like, like those, like, big charges make money? 
What's that again? The what? Like big charges. Big, oh, yeah. Like you're saying, like a church and all that kind of stuff is uh, uh, organization, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen some like big church has like a big, like a video production. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They have a good facility, like a live stream, mm-hmm. their websites and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I know that some of my web designer used to work for them or whatever mm-hmm. and then like it's high budget mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so like i was curious like how they make money mm-hmm. i think it varies in different churches and i mean there's there's a whole movement out there called name it and claim it where they really say if it's about tithing or giving gifts and they they, they convince many a times which is i don't agree with but if you you um donate this much money to the church you're gonna get it back 10 times and stuff like that i mean really a lot of these churches some people really you know don't get me wrong there were some mega churches out there that uh, i think it's one um can't think of the name of it right now but um the guy wrote the purpose driven life i mean he he gives 90 percent of his proceeds back to the community I mean, he, he's a Rick Warren. Rick Warren was a guy that the mega church, but he doesn't keep it for himself or build mansions like a lot of other folks do. He gives it back to the community. But some of them are slick marketing people. I mean, I mean, you think about when you're dealing people that have a need in life. You know, they've, yeah. they 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 they're addicted or they 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 have financial problems, a marital problem. They go to someone for help. They trust these people. Yeah, and all of a sudden. The more you get people trusting you, the more testimonials people do. And people say, I don't identify with that pastor, but I identify with that guy, a gal over here. So they, they just keep growing. And, and then beside, you know, rich people are Christians too, whether people believe it or not. Yeah. There's a lot of people that come outside that give huge donations to churches. Um, you know, so yeah, it, it's kind of, you know, I don't work with a lot of those churches like that. I really like where the rubber meets the road type, but... Yeah, it, it's some people. I, I wish more pastors would call out those groups that are really, uh, really fleecing people. Sometimes. Yeah, why don't why don't they do that? Do you think? I've challenged a couple. I mean, some of them. <laughs> <laughs> you challenged I've a challenged couple. I challenged a couple, and I said, I told them to like do it. Do it because I don't have a platform. I'm just a guy you know, that goes goes to church. But right. but I think if you really believe what the word says, yeah. And you really believe what the Bible says? Yeah. Is don't take verses out of there that meets your agenda. Yeah. Read the whole book, and, and I think you know a lot of them are afraid that. Well, it's like in today's world. Yeah. You may be against something, and I may be against something, and I see it happening, but I'm afraid to say something because of the retaliation. Yeah. The retaliation. I think that's happening in the church community too. That there's so many churches that are afraid that. That if I say the wrong thing, I'm gonna lose these people, or I'm gonna lose these people, and I I think what they try to do is just go through the book, go through the Bible, but don't necessarily call out. I did I did have, go to a pastor. I call him my pastor in Maine. He call him out. I mean, I, that's why I had kind of have this flavor because when I became a Christian and started listening to his teachings, I mean, he I mean, he literally would call him out. I mean, he he talk about the churches. You know, he wouldn't call it seed money. He called it weed money because <laughs> oh. <laughs> some of them were you know weren't doing the right things. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think a lot of yeah, I, I guess the, the phrase to be offend afraid to offend somebody, lose the population, the membership, whatever. But yeah, that makes sense. I mean, like I guess rich get richer in kind of situation, right? I mean, I've seen some uses and all that kind of stuff that they did something wrong but like they still are able to do business and Mm -hmm. i think i think it's kind of you know um different kind of organization you know then like uh but another another thing is that a lot of business but encouraging people to start the small business is that advantage to big corporation Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not sure if that's an advantage. So, like, if it's, like, Amazon or Walmart and those kind of people, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if from their perspective, do you think that people starting small business is beneficial? Does that make sense? Like, yeah. are they, like, taking advantage to, like, are they trying to, like, have a marketing, like, a sh- you know, scheme or mm-hmm. whatever? Mm-hmm. Say, hey, start your company. Mm-hmm. By end of the day, that would be good for they're big companies <laughs> you know i thought about that before. yeah in, in some cases it is i mean I, I think some of the 
you know, for example, take a company like uh, uh, Boeing, for example. Mm. Boeing massive makes uh, makes airplanes and so forth. My my wife's dad used to be a Boeing executive, but then, then they get into the space industry and stuff like that. But there's also a lot of allied businesses because not everything is made in the Boeing plant. Yeah. Then it's maybe it's made. Some of the parts actually come from small entrepreneurs that have contracts with Boeing. So some guy may be a mechanic or he may be a draftsman. He could literally work out of his home and still work for a huge corporation. Um, I, I think a lot of the huge, corporation, huge corporations that, how do I say this, but there's a lot of entry level positions. The WalMarts of the world, the Amazons of the world, the uh, the, the you know the Costcos. The, you know, you, if you go there, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity for people at those entry level positions. But many times, very few of them rise up to the management type positions. So yeah. So, uh, but there is some companies. If if you know, for example, QuickBooks or say Zoom or whatever, they would want people to go into business because. If you and me are going to go into business, we're going to need one or two of those products, right? Yeah. If we're going to do podcasting, if we're going to do any video. And if you're going to do bookkeeping, why would you not use QuickBooks or something like that? But That's true. But I don't think there's a really a... I don't think most people think about what's really going on sometimes. <laughs> Everyone's in their own little worlds. You yeah. Know, but the, that makes sense. I mean, honestly, I was thinking, so like you made like... like uh, wealth for yourself and then like successful like what is the like a kind of things that you did to like always had it like financially like a stable freedom well it never starts out that way obviously you've got to have an you've got to be positioned in the job enough that you can because it's not not always about money it's always about time and i think that's the thing that with me was like i think i told you the other day that one time when i was a chamber of commerce director um, I was also a varsity football coach in my town. I, you know, the head coach. You know, I just didn't show up. I had to figure everything out. The head, you know, the, yeah. dick, the work plan. Then I decided to run for legislature at the same time. Yeah, that's all. You know, and I, so it's it's a work ethic. It really is. And and the thing is, you, you something. If I could say anything, everybody is. is we're all going to fall down. We're all going to make mistakes. It's how quick you get back up again. You know, and and, and most your really successful people have failed. They, they don't wear on their chest how many failures they have because you only hear about the one success they've had yeah but they may have had 15 failures before they actually like abraham lincoln yeah ran for i think president seven times before he got elected i mean so so it gives you an example but i just think people need to what do you like i think if you I don't care if it's even a hobby a hobby could turn into a, a business or a side business in the digital world you know, for example, my daughter. My daughter was a nurse, didn't get the vaccine. State of Maine was really restrictive on no no waivers whatsoever, no religious waivers, no um, um, medical waivers. Yeah. And what happened, she got fired. They literally walked my daughter, nurse supervisor, out the door. And she always had this idea that, I wanted to sell clothes. She was, I mean, she always liked clothing. She, you know, she was, and so she started about five years ago selling clothes on eBay. Now she's on a channel called Whatnot, and she's doing two or three hundred dollars a weekend selling clothes. But you know, she's putting the time in, and I'm saying I'm proud of her. You know, yeah. because she's doing the extra work. She work all day. She has a young child. She works for her mom, which is a nurse practitioner. But you know, she has a young child, and I'm proud of her that she's taking the extra effort. You know, my son started, you know, a bachelor's degree like his own, you know, dad. He, he after he graduates from college, um, he says, Dad, you got a lawnmower? Yeah, I got a lawn. So he wanted to start a landscaping business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, a landscaping, well, he turned it into $800,000 business. COVID came around, he lost it. But the thing is, he, he worked out long hours. He'd be out plowing snow at 3 o'clock in the morning. And, and I think a lot of people have to realize that, that, when you do fall down, you can get back up. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that I've always realized is don't take yourself too serious. But also, there's always something else out there if that doesn't work for you. Yeah, I I, I, th I love that, that that mentality of like, yeah, I mean, a lot of people like starting business and all that kind of stuff, they can't do it because they're scared of failure, right? I no. mean, I don't know. Like, I, I think whenever... I was starting, I think I, my bank account went to like a negative, like 
probably five, six times, you know? And then like, oh, pay rent and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And then, you know, like literally movie things of like a past dude mm -hmm. and all that kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah. It happened so many times. And then what's the worst thing that can happen after that? You know what I mean? Then like, I just, uh, at that point, like, I had to, I had to be mm -hmm. successful. Mm -hmm. I had to do something to get away with that situation. Mm -hmm. So there was no going back. And then I think there's a bunch of stuff I did to make it stable or whatever. And then, uh, it just, I think a lot of people thinks it's kind of funny, right? Cliches, cliches for reason, mm -hmm. but work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes like your uh, daughter and then your son and have a business and they're working hard. I think that's necessary, mm -hmm. but certain point to become uh, making a living to making uh, like a, uh, career or like a building a company mm -hmm. once you start building a company you have to have a structure mm -hmm. and then if you have a structure you don't really have to work that hard but like a, you save time to have somebody else do mm -hmm. your job then you can kind of start building opportunity mm -hmm. uh, elsewhere so yeah. i mean that's kind of what my take on it but i thought that was interesting you're saying like you always were head coach of the football team CEO of the company whenever you're 25 and then you did like a learn a, like a, a polit, polit, politician right <laughs> yeah politics uh, world politics yeah yeah a few so times <laughs> yeah so I was curious because that kind of stuff is like because of, like in Japan or like the culture thing or maybe like American things too but you have to work your way up right like a mentality of like I'm pretty sure you didn't do like assistant coach for the football for like many many years or whatever mm -hmm. or like because ceo stuff too right like you weren't like like file clerk or mail person or whatever mm -hmm. but like like did you just got the job just <laughs> how did you how did you get those kind of position with the head coach or like a top instead of like spending time to like level up in right. your field, if that makes sense. Well, I, I think the biggest thing was, I, I, I'll go back to my childhood, is that my dad worked in the cement plant, you know, yeah. basically a cement plant where he crushed rocks and he makes the cement that makes the roads. And so he worked in the, he was a labor type maintenance guy in that company. Yeah. My mom literally worked in the fish plant. Cut, you, you probably have in Japan, you see where women cut heads off fish and they can them. My mom did that. Well, when I was in high school, my dad said, hey, we got a job at the mill when you graduate from college. I mean, graduate from high school, you want to come work there? And I said, no, I'm not going to go work at the plant. So I, because I, I'd hear him come home from work, working late some night. Yeah. Come home coughing, cement dust all over. And he eventually died of cancer, mm. I think, because of that. I said, I'm going to college. So I decided to go to college. But I guess, so I went to college, you know, met my contacts there and stuff. But I've always, tried to play a game ahead of me for example what i mean by that is maybe i'm not qualified maybe i'm not i don't have the degrees that guy did before yeah get me in the room tell let me tell you so i really my success came from being me i guess i, I love people uh, i always try to encourage people when i when i ran my companies or or even groups i always brought everybody into the process it wasn't it wasn't top, top down it was digesting what came up from the bottom but um, some of it, I don't think, it, some of it was luck. You know, I was in the right place at the right time. I also say living in Maine, I was, even though I was a big fish in a small pond, small state, I often said I was a victim to my environment because can you imagine if I grew up in New York or if I grew up in California where I'd have a lot more people pouring into me that might help me out. So, so but what I learned the most, Yosuke, from management and you know, just life in general, I learned not what to do more than what to do. I saw some people that sucked with people. People are mean to people. People treat their employees like, you know, they publicly chastise you right in front of an audience. Yeah. But privately, they say they, apo they apologize. I didn't want to be that type of boss. So I think my thing was I took the risk. I always tried to I applied for jobs that maybe I wouldn't get it. Yeah. But maybe I would get it. But I just think I, I was kind of born like a leader. I, don't, I can't explain it. You know, yeah. I've always wanted to lead people, move people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, some of the times I did, I did start in the personnel department. Um, 
filing stuff before I became a personnel director. That was yeah. an intern job at college. I also went around and delivered paychecks on Thursdays, and everybody loved me because that's the guy with the paychecks. Because you know? <laughs> in old days, we didn't have electronic. Yeah. Pe- I literally went around and handed paychecks out to nurses, and they yeah. loved it. <laughs> I loved seeing them. So. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, because like whenever I was doing um, movies at the time, right? And then one of the my camera assistants asked me, say, Okay, so like, how long did you do like a first AC job? Like, because like a cameraman, there's like a different steps, right? Like, mm-hmm. if it's a movie set, you have PA, which is like a production assistant, right. like a bring coffee kind of by person, right? And then second AC, which is like a people who does like clapping, and they also like a pull, mm-hmm. uh, you know, whatever. And the first AC like a pull focus, and then there's a camera operator operator and then a director of photography mm-hmm. so like called dp or whatever and then uh so i was working i was filming a uh, feature film in dallas mm-hmm. and then i was director of photography on that feature film that was pretty decent side budget and then like we had a actress actors from la and all that kind of stuff and then my first uh ac asked me like how long you been doing like a camera work and second AC work. Like I said, I never done it. Mm-hmm. Like I never done wow. those second AC or first AC job. I did a gaffer job, which is a lighting mm-hmm. uh, a department, a head of the lighting department. Did you get credits in the film? Yeah, yeah, Your yeah. Your name is in yeah, the film? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, of course I filmed it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so like he asked me, and I said, uh, never done it. He's like, how how can you just become a director of photography and mm-hmm. get hired? I was like, well, I just call myself director of photography, <laughs> and people just start hiring me as director yeah. of photography. And then if you just shoot right, if you just film the good things and then meet people's expectation, mm-hmm. like you don't really need to work, work the way mm-hmm. you're up for it. Like I worked... In a different department, I worked in different things. I was looking at things on how the director of photography works and, you know, that kind of stuff. And that was enough for me. I just didn't have to have that time to do the second AC, first AC career stuff. Mm-hmm. Because I believe when people start doing those kind of jobs, that people look at you as that person. Right. But meaning, like, if you're, like, working in the healthcare business or like you doing like a payroll or whatever, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. people will start referring you to as a the payroll person, right? Right. But if you just come into like in a meeting, say, hey, I'm the CEO of this company, people will look at you mm-hmm. like a CEO company, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So I just, I was just curious because you always seemed like had a, like a top level job. Mm-hmm. So you just kind of like, say you're top level people <laughs> and then you just got the top level yeah. job is that a kind of thing or yeah it is i mean sometimes it's having confidence in yourself and, and, and i think here's the thing about you for example and, and maybe at me some level too but you know you, i know you had someone that you did was on american idol yeah that was uh what's the voice of american idol american, american idol, idol yeah he was here and found the mic and too and and just think about that for a minute i mean so many people like you, you take the American Idol concept, you take people that are working in warehouses, you take people that are waitresses, you take folks that are maybe be a manager, and all of a sudden they get this beautiful voice, but they're not following their dream, and they don't know how to get where they did. Yeah. So what happens is, I think right now, for example, there's better players out there in the streets playing basketball. Not all of them, but there's some better players out there playing basketball pick up basketball, some guy that works at a, at a mill that's probably better than somebody playing the NBA. Yeah, he that's true. He just didn't get a chance. He just didn't know how to get where he did. And I think what happens is you, in your skill set, you, you, you knew this. You just didn't have the title behind you. I know how to manage people, if I, even if I didn't have the title behind me. But the cool thing is once you get that title, you ride that baby. You know, <laughs> once you become a CEO of a company, yeah. or once you become a politician, I was a county commissioner. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, once I can, you know, put down my resume, football coach. I mean, and, and things, things kind of happen. I had nowhere in my resume did I want to be a varsity football coach. Yeah, I wanted to play football, but it was too little. I wasn't as big as I am now, fat as I am now. <laughs> but, but, um, 
But my son was moving up into from junior high to in and and they asked me if I'd help out. Well, my son's playing Chris, I'm gonna be at the game anyways. So what happened was as he trans you know, I had done some Pee Wee coaching for then, some freshman coaching. But when he transitioned up to varsity football, I said, like, he was a big kid, and he's, you know, he's, a, you know, about, you know, about 250, high school, you know, paid 240 maybe. Damn. He was good as a freshman. Yeah. And he was going to start. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I got to get up there and help him out because he's going to get killed. Yeah. Well, he did. I, I, he didn't get killed. He, I moved up with him, but consequently, as I was the assistant coach, the head coach quit, and I took over the head jobs. But no ways did I want to do that, but I enjoyed doing it. I mean, and, and I, so I think – I just think of being of service to people, but in and really, I talk to everybody and listen to everybody because you never know. We had the conversation the other day. How many times have we talked to people that we see something in them that they don't see themselves? Yeah. If they only could get tweaked a little bit, and that's what kind of what I'm doing right now with helping businesses, pouring into them, helping them to take my knowledge. And one thing I want to say quickly too is. I thought they talk about where we are in life. You can't change the past, right? No. Can't dwell over it. You can't predict the future, but I think you can plan the future a little bit better. Yeah. And then, but but, but where you are, be there. You know, that's a really important thing. Is be you know be in the present. You know, treat people the way you should. You want to treat. Study like if you want to study, if you want to grow on something. But we can't predict the future, but. But I'm trying to teach people you can plan because who would think, seriously, with COVID? I mean, I was from the medical community, so I knew that medically we would figure it out. Yeah. People were getting the COVID exponentially. It means they were getting everywhere. You touch, you know, we're washing stuff down. People crazy about we were going to catch COVID. Yeah. But exponentially people weren't dying, Right. So that was a good thing. And, and I knew our scientists and we'd figure this out. What freaked me out was freaking economy shut down. You can't go. I mean, who, you know, th- that that freaked me. Yeah. Who would think that would happen? Well, that very thing is going to happen in someone's life today. There's someone going to, ha- something's going to happen. That, right now, as we're sitting here, there's some business closing because they didn't prepare. There's some business right now that's that's freaking out because they can't find people. They don't. I mean, they haven't shifted. So when I'm trying to convince people, we've got a huge example with COVID out there. How things has changed. Are you going back to your old ways? No, it's okay. I'm going. No, things are going. To, we talked about it the other day. We don't know where the economy is going to go. So we're trying. To, you know, I'm trying to train people through the groups I work with. Is basically to start preparing, start knowing. Because I found out during COVID when I lost. 60% of my business, the 40% I did keep, why'd I keep them? Because I had a relationship and I knew them. We talked about COVID. We talked about how our business were effective. We band together. So I'm trying to tell, teach people now is you don't have to go it alone. But a day like COVID is going to happen again. Hopefully not my lifetime, <laughs> but something may happen. So yeah, so yeah it's kind of um, you know, j- just having people be aware of what's really happening pay attention yeah so. it's it's a lot of i mean you can't plan it that unexpected but you can plan for the safety i guess right yeah right. i don't know how you can do that whenever i mean like it it's a risk and reward i guess mm-hmm. right like in the business like sometimes you have to take a risk well let me ask you this question yeah you know you've got you, we've talked about your goals and you've I've talked about my goals. Mm-hmm. How are you going to feel when you get there? Say what? How are you going to feel when you get there? Um, I think whenever I get there, I think it'll be good, but I don't think it changed much. You know, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to have another goal after mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. It's just that, that I think that to get to the my goal is more fun. <laughs> yeah, so it's the journey, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what people, I try to tell people, you got to embrace the journey. Yeah. Because it may not turn out the way, I mean, think about it. If I was to give you $100,000 right now, you'd probably think of ways of spending it. Mm-hmm. But you're, you're a type of guy, you're probably going to invest some of it mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. But money does not make you happy. The ultimate goal does not make you happy. The money and the resources you gather give you the opportunity to do what you really want to do in life. But, but I think 
the journey, you're absolutely right. Is you've got to enjoy the journey, because because if you don't enjoy picking up the phone, if you don't enjoy, you know, if you got if you've got a, um, a car wash, and if you don't enjoy going checking on, I mean, if you don't enjoy it, why do it, right? So and then and you're absolutely right. What's the next thing you want to conquer? Because because during that, because that could fail, right. right? That could very fail. Like I said, the past. But guess what? You probably learned a crap load of stuff. Yeah. And you're going to do it again, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of things that, you know, like I've been kind of thinking about lately is that, you know, do I, should I just do one thing? You know what I mean? Like, because of, um, you know, marketing and advertising and all that kind of stuff, right? Like a focus on the one company, but like seem, seems like a lot of people talks about diversification right and then like is that be better and then but also like i kind of like that you know like i can do a bunch of different stuff Mm -hmm. because i get bored easily Mm -hmm. and then you have add like me (laughs) shiny object syndrome (laughs) (laughs) so like it's like and then also like i'm trying to be good at managing my time and then managing my effort because of like you and i have kind of same similarity about okay we, we we see this vision this could be successful okay this is another opportunity this is another opportunity so let's just try it right mm-hmm. and then but if you diverge too much too fast nothing nothing become like a hundred percent successful mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so like i'm just trying to like a pick three things so like a, lately i've been living my life of like three things it's important to me today mm-hmm. <laughs> and then like i have a list on my phone or on my desk on the paper i kind of write it down say today i'm gonna take care of this and this and that either personal or even business or my hobby or whatever i do have a those like a three things in my head to move towards so like i do have like uh uh, five year goal and then I wrote it down like I'll be this is what I wanted to accomplish and then those three things I write it down is uh, gonna be good for those five year goals mm-hmm. so every day I'm just doing stuff to make sure I'm achieving that goal mm-hmm. I guess to go into that reaction and then sometimes you know I'm not going to do much stuff today. Mm -hmm. That's just a kind of like Mm -hmm. my goal because I think mental health is important. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, you know, I think that's something that I'm trying to showcase or like uh, talk to everybody about, you know, I guess old days or whatever. Like people weren't talking about too much about mental health. Mm -hmm. But like, I think the brain is a big muscle in your head. Mm -hmm. I think it's important sometimes it's more important than your health Mm -hmm. it's because brain does i think signals all the your you know Mm -hmm. body Mm -hmm. so i think that uh that's kind of what i'm trying to do like i was making one of the youtube video talking about mental health and i was like Mm -hmm. you know like a lot of fitness influencer make like a cool slow motion transition Mm -hmm. and a sweaty kind of like a montage video right Mm -hmm. why can't make a mental health cool Mm -hmm, (laughs) you know mm -hmm. so i was like it was kind of like a funny video i'm trying to make it's like i'm reading a book (laughs) and then make it look cool but yeah what do you what do you think about that kind of like i don't know like why do you how do you how do you live day to day i guess right now Gosh, my mind's like yours. I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an idea guy. I mean, I'll, I'll see something and I'll immediately think, well, that could be changed and stuff like that. I guess my thing is I have a hot tub. I sit there and relax, <laughs> and meditate and that. Um, um, yeah, it's kind of, I, I, I think it's, it's mental health is, is, is important a lot. A lot of it is having a relationship. I know you have a great, great relationship with your girlfriend. I have a great with my wife. And a relationship that you can share people, share your uh, your thoughts, your ideas, you know, your cares, your worries. With. Someone you can trust is important. Um, a lot of people don't have that, so they have to find it within themselves. You know, so you, you've got to take time because if you, if you don't have – if you don't have it together mentally, you're going to be no good for anybody else, right? And so I think it's 
important that people realize that, you know, don't take yourself too serious. Uh, I really think one of the, the, the best ways to really feel good about yourself is really give. You know, I think that's the thing that I'm working with some of my groups. I'll tell you about that later. But, but just to give, I think sometimes we have inward eyeballs. Everything, how everything affects us. And I think that, that, that even though a lot, a lot of people would see what you were doing with MMA or the Taekwondo, what you were doing is like, it's relaxing. You got in there and wanted to really, you know, you know, to, 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 to really challenge yourself. And, and it's like when I started, you know, I, I played pickleball a little bit, you know, but I immediately went from playing pickleball. I want to be in some stinking tournament. You know, I want to be, you know, I don't want to be in your age group tournament. I want to be in some old guys, <laughs> tournament, you know, but, I, but I think it's, um, not taking yourself too serious, knowing that, um, it's going to, whatever's happening today is going to be different tomorrow. Um, uh, I believe in prayer, you know, prayer. I, I think praying, uh, asking God to open doors for you. I, I, I really believe that happens, and a lot of people don't, you know. And I just, I can't tell them it's going to work for them not. I just know how, how it's worked for me. Mm. And to be able to, you know, pray for people and or help people, um, you know, don't walk by people. Because I always b- believe in breathing life and encouragement to people. And I think doing that makes you feel better because it takes – it takes off from the stress of the daily stuff. And, and, and I, I think when you talked about multiple income streams, that's very important. And we talk about how we scale businesses. Like, for example, say if you, you all of a sudden landed a huge contract with Window World that just came top of my head, that all of a sudden, you, how are you going to scale that? How many more employees do I need? But I think we have to scale our personal lives. I think we have to say, if I'm in the th- three different things, three different projects, how much of me can I put in each one of those? Yeah. And then, then who am I going to rely on? Am I going to rely on JC, Amanda out front? I think that was her name. Whoever you... <laughs> Paige. <laughs> Paige yeah. out yeah. front. But I'm just thinking, so how you scale your own personal... How much time do you give your girlfriend? Yeah. I mean, how much, and how much time... You know, so, so I think it's not thinking it's always all about us. Yeah. Because we ain't that important. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do ask this question, like, uh, the kind of end of the segment, too. But, like, uh, like a five years ago, the 2018, right? That's mm-hmm. pre-COVID. What mm-hmm. were you doing in 2018? I was doing digital marketing. Still yeah. doing digital I came by. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like the guy was the American Idol that had the fly in the Um Yeah, I was doing digital marketing at that time, and uh, and I think what I learned from that was, is, uh, like I said, I lost a lot of that business, and now I've transitioned and setting up business groups. You know, and it's more specifically Christian business group because I those people hopefully are givers, and there's so many causes that that I want to be behind that I learned from COVID of the needs out there that. You know, we've worked with anti-human trafficking organization, which you know is a big need. Not only is it sexual trafficking, but it's slave labor trafficking. We've worked with addiction ministries and stuff like that. So at my point, you know, you look at me five years ago, today, I'm about giving today. Mm. You know, I was stressed like everybody else. and How am I going to pay the bills? Is my career going really to be really want, where I want it to be? Now it's like, it's going to happen. You know, I, I just need to reach out to more people, uh, network with people, and just, so yeah, five years ago, I was doing what I am, but I've but grown. Um, yeah, <laughs> if, you, if you had to give yourself advice to yourself five years ago, what would that be? Uh, be more disciplined, you know? I mean, I think I learned from having some big accounts, good money, and they went away. <laughs> so I think so. Rather than have one client that's paying you ten thousand dollars a month, yeah, and they go away, maybe you need to have five clients paying you twenty five hundred dollars a month, or and and I think because because once you get comfortable, mm-hmm. that's relative, right? I mean that you may be comfortable today, but uncomfortable tomorrow. So so the, my advice would be basically to be more disciplined. I think that's the weakest thing. Like I'm like you, I have shiny object syndrome that looks good i want to do this you know ai suck come out now i want to know as much as i can about ai you know what can i do things like that so i need to be more disciplined in what i do and i, I would recommend that to anybody is just really stay focused and then scale yourself you know how 
how can you give of your time mm-hmm. so you can be successful at one of the four or five things you're doing rather than being marginally successful in, all, in any of them. So. Yeah, today, like you talked about so, like a, you said a couple of times, kind of caught my, not eyes, but I guess, but uh, you said, don't take life seri- seriously. Mm-hmm. I think you said it multiple times. Mm-hmm. Like why, why would you, why, what made you say that a lot? Well, um, you know, I, I think, I think life is serious. I think we're, we're put on this earth to, to give, you know, to help others. You know, I think, you know, God has a plan for every one of us. And, but, but when I say don't take life too serious, I, I think really is don't take yourself too serious. I mean, some people, you know, most of the fights that people have is, is over two or three things, greed, envy, covenants. I want what they have. Yeah. I want what they have. And I think we talked about this the other day. People want what you have. Yeah. At your age, people want what you have. At my age, people want what I've done. Yeah. But they're not willing to do what we did. Yeah. And that's it's the thing. So I, I just think that, you know, when I say don't take life seriously, I mean, life is a gift. You know that really sincerely right now. You know life can change. You know? Yeah. And, and, and I think it's a gift and it's what we have to do with it. I'm not saying you have to earn your way into heaven. We're just supposed to be this way for people and, and help people. So, so I don't take myself serious. You know, I, you know, people that surround me. I, I ran for legislature one time, lost by twenty-one votes. Had all these people working for me. I knocked on the doors. I did the debates. I did everything. My team that worked with me, the day after the election, I lost by twenty-one votes. That morning, I was out there by myself, picking up my signs, picking up my signs. Went right back to work. I did my job. My team that worked, it was devastating. How are you, how are you going? I said, hey, you can't take, I'm, I'm not that important. Obviously, people, they want someone else. But, me, you know, if you think yourself, sometimes people, it's pride. You know, it really is pride. You know, people have fights because of pride. And I, I, I just think when I say don't take life serious, take, you should take life very serious because it's precious. I said, don't take, don't think you're too much. You're, you're too big because there's always someone bigger. There's always someone faster. There's always someone smarter. And I think, you know, so I'm just trying to teach people, be you. And and if you're doing the right things, the business will come to you. The relationships will come to you. But, yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry I said taking life, say, take your life serious, young man. <laughs> <laughs> but don't take yourself too serious. Don't take serious. serious. No, no. Yeah. You know. I mean, have fun, right? I mean. Have, you know, have fun, but also be at peace with yourself. That's a real key thing being at peace there's a difference between you know being happy because happy could be incremental it could be based on an event but do you have peace within yourself that everything's going to be okay are you happy are you happy with the skin you're in you know i'd like to be you know i've lost some of my bulk because i haven't been to the gym i got fat bulk but i'm not happy the way but but obviously i'm comfortable what i'm doing right now but i'm at peace what i'm doing because um you know, you have that sense. I can't explain peace, but there's a difference between happiness and peace. Mm. And I think when people realize they have peace in their life and say, I can't control it. I can't fix everything in the world. I just have to feel comfortable that tomorrow's a new day. And if you're doing the same thing day after day and expecting something to change, somewhere as you go to bed that night and the next morning you get to change something. Because if you don't like what you, if you don't like your outcome every day, because maybe you're doing the same thing every day, maybe you're hanging with the wrong people. Yeah. Maybe you're hanging with idiots. Maybe, yeah. Maybe you're hanging with whatever, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, totally makes sense to me. What, what about uh, five years ago? No, no, five years ago. What about how do you see yourself in five years? Well, I hope I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, um, Gosh, I'd like to see that I've been an influence to people. You know, I, I, I'd like to say that I made some kind of impact in people's lives. You know, I won't know that until I got to heaven and I happen to see them up there. I mean, if they didn't make it, well, <laughs> but but I, I, I just think that the things that you and I do, which is kind of cool, that things that you and I do, we don't, we're never going to see the results unless we, you know, how many times you've worked with people and and you haven't seen them for four or five years, 
but you see them a couple of years later and say, oh my gosh, you know. So, so I think there's things that we do and it's always, um, but five years I see myself of, you know, I just being a bigger, taking the gifts I've been given through God and helping people, whether they want to hear them or not, I'm going to at least keep telling them what I think they should be doing. Not preachy to them, but they come to me. But basically, I just see me have a bigger platform than just working on my office, you know. Maybe, you know, I have a bigger platform like you're, like you're building where people say, this guy's not full of crap. He's got some good advice. So I guess being, um, pouring words of encouragement people into people, helping them whatever they want to be, and I guess maybe just a bigger platform and, Maybe this will help me from the show. You have such a large following. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not on the way there. I'm, I'm enjoying this like a podcast, you know, like yeah. just like meeting new people mm-hmm. like almost every week, and then I'm, I'm, uh, you know, publishing this and every week, and then I don't know. It's just everybody has a different story, mm-hmm. and then I think that's the only things that make it people differentiate uh, also like uh like become successful not successful whatever on like a creative world is the storytelling aspect mm-hmm. i think storytelling was like such a like a kind of a trend once a, once before but it's not even a trend it's being always a storytelling because there's so many like ais and you know like technologies and how cool the video is and special effects. Yes, I think everybody, a lot of people can do that now and a lot mm-hmm. of people will be able to such a uh, such a less co- cost and they're also like less time mm-hmm. to put it in. Like mm-hmm. put like a fire in the background or whatever could have been, I don't know, a day job or two day job like mm-hmm. 10 years mm-hmm. ago. Mm-hmm. Now you can probably do it in like two minutes, probably. Yeah, if you get the platform. I mean, yeah, like upload. ten minutes for yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, so like, uh, yeah, I'm I'm just liking that about the learning about people's story and you know, st- storytelling aspect of it. So, I think I'm I'm kind of enjoy it. Is there anything else you wanted to? Yeah, cover? I guess you know where I'm looking at is is um, some of the groups I'm working with. Like I mentioned, is, is the local groups I'm forming, and I also have a a, a national group I've formed where you know just people can get together and, and talk about, so they can be real, you know? And, and I think that you're so right about telling stories because I think that we all began somewhere. And I get really stoked by telling stories. And, and something I've told you before, I've gotten back in my mind is, and, and hopefully start doing some podcasts is not bad for an old guy. Because I really, there's some ordinary men out there and women that have doing extraordinary things that we don't know about. It's like I said, the people in American Idol, that guy that you had in here, that's a phenomenal singer, but he worked at home as a graphic designer or some gal that, that worked at Walmart. Now she, so so there's, there's ordinary people like you and me that are doing extraordinary things. I want to hear their stories. I want to bring them in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And maybe you and I both can do it, but just because I think what that does empowers people. It gets us out of our crazy world. You think of the, all the songs that are written back, at least when I grew up in the 70s and 80s. Well, let's take country songs. All about life. All about life. It's some story about someone's crappy life, usually crappy life in country music. So I think people love to hear stories. And I, I think that nowadays it's so easy to get people's stories out there so that's kind of that's kind of where i want to go with stuff is as i hear these stories i'm going to keep a portfolio of them and then the good ones i'd you know, maybe bring in here and say hey how did you start that business well i started selling furniture out of the back of my truck you know i mean wow now look at you you know so because that inspires people you know it makes them think that maybe i could do it too you know it gives them hope yeah i think that's the whole reason i think i'm doing it mm-hmm. just like uh, really? yeah. give people show the people that endless possibility mm-hmm. and also like it's a lot of people going through like i'm talking about you know career change mm-hmm. you know but i that's why i wanted to have like a lot of different people in here rather than stick to like just a jujitsu or just like a movie people i had a beekeeper professional gamer real estate people Musician, mm-hmm. 
jujitsu guy, like a whole bunch of people,、mm-hmm. you know? But they make a living of what they lo- love. And they also, some people have a different, like a project, passion project going、mm-hmm. on. And then some people,、um, you know, beat the cancer, like a stage four and all that、mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And then there is a lot of story to be told. And then a lot of the potential. I think if I believe in that, if people can see it, And then people have enough courage to、mm-hmm. talk about it.、Mm-hmm. The only things you have to do is to do it. Right. So、yeah. I think I believe in that. And then if I can give people opportunity to see the life and to see the opportunity and to see the career path or see the life they wanted to have through this podcast to show a glimpse、mm-hmm. of their life that they can. Potentially have、mm-hmm. or potentially see,、mm-hmm. and then I think that will make me happy.、Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's funny when we first started talking about the podcast a few months ago, and, and, and we were talking, I think we, had, we were at a restaurant having lunch and something, and you were talking about how you, know, you were gathering these followers and you wanted to get so many subscribers. And, and at that time, you know, and, and that's what happens in today's world about the more. Content we create, the more people do follow us to give us platforms. But I can't really tell what you just said that you enjoy doing this. And I think you, I think in here, your heart, you're getting, it's fulfilling something in you more than the number of followers. And you just like sitting here hearing people's stories because it, it's doing something for you. And hopefully, as your platform grows,、yeah. more people are going to be inspired by that because, you know, the followers, the clicks, the likes are going to go away. Yeah. But this is going to, when you have these one on ones with people, And they're open with you and they're transparent. Yeah, I, I can tell you're enjoying it, man. I really can. I, <laughs> yeah, you thank you. Too, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And then yeah. I learned stuff, you know,、yeah. like I learned about you that I didn't know today, you know,、mm. that's cool thing. Now you don't want to work with me ever again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would like to. I would yeah, like to、yeah. work with you. That,、uh, yeah, but、uh, thank you for coming to、yeah. the show, Clayton. And then, uh, Uh, thank you guys for、uh, coming to this、uh, podcast every week on the Friday. If you're watching YouTube, you know, I know we just say likes and subscribe doesn't count, but it does help me on this <laughs> channel. So please like and comment and subscribe and hit the link and no- notification on. If you guys are listening on the Spotify or any other um, uh, uh, podcast platform, please give me a five star review. Uh, I'm not really sure what helps the five star review, but you know, download all that kind of stuff, and then that will help me. And then keep support and then keep ha-、uh, you know, having this show、uh, alive and going. So, thank you guys for coming in, and see you guys next Friday. Peace.